Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today we have something a little different. Our i8 is a total dirt ball. Take a look at this car. It is a complete mess, my gosh. So, good question. Can you winter daily a supercar? Well, we're gonna find out today. We're gonna be washing this car. It's covered in salt, it's covered in grime. We've been using this quite a bit, and here in Colorado, we've gotten a fair bit of snow and kind of crummy stuff on the roads. This is going to be an episode where we actually wash a dirty car for a change. I know everybody says that. They're like, oh, you started with a clean car. Well, we are starting with an extremely dirty car. So <laughs> this is going to be fun. Also, one of our Patreons has sent us some stuff to check out. It's from a company called Polish Angel. They have kind of some interesting names for their products, but uh, we're going to be using a foam cannon, for a foam for the foam cannon, and then we're going to use their wash and some of their sprays afterwards. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm really excited to try these products out. So, all right, well, we got a lot of set up here. We got to get our buckets all set up and get our pressure washer rolling. And first thing is, we're going to snow blow the entire car. Now, I'm using Polish Angel's Snowman. This is a one to three concentrate. So, I've got it in my bottle here. I've already mixed it up. We're going to see how this stuff works. I'm really excited to try this out. Wow, look at that. Well, that's some pretty good suds, don't you think? Wow, look at that. Wow, what do you think? Boy, that's that's really super foamy. Used up almost all of my bottle. That's kind of normal. This thing seems to run through this stuff pretty fast. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Well, with the car completely foamed like that, my next step is going to be to do the wheels. Now, this foam sitting on the car is not gonna hurt anything, and I want it to sit on here so it can rehydrate all of that dirt and grime that's on there, because it's really impacted on there. It'll also rehydrate the salt that's on there as well. So doing the wheels gives this stuff a little more time for it to work. Now one other thing I want to mention about the car is that we have the full front half of this car covered in Expel PPF and that really really helps with getting all this stuff off. It also protects the paint. It's a really good covering. The rest of the, in fact, the entire car as well is also ceramic coated. So that's why I don't worry about it too awfully much driving it in crummy weather like this and it gets really dirty. So uh, that's just a little caveat up front because I think the car is gonna look pretty amazing when it's done. My first step on the wheels is gonna be to hit it with a bit of Adam's wheel cleaner. This is that iron removing stuff. It does a great job. You spray it on here and it all kind of rains down pink. So I'm just going to hit this, the brakes, everything in here. I'm going to let this sit for just a little bit, not too awfully long. But we want to make sure we coat everything. Now, in addition, these wheels have also been ceramic coated, something I do for the wheels. So I'm really curious as to see how clean they come. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and hit the other three wheels and I'll come back and we'll scrub this wheel. As for the car, I'm doing a bit of a two bucket wash here. I actually have three just because I know I'm going to need a lot of soap. So two of these are soap and this one is a rinse. I've got all my brushes and things in here we're going to be using. Now that this wheel cleaner has had a few minutes to really dig in, you can see it's all purpley. We can see all of our purple stuff from the, from the spray. It's great. It's taken out all the iron. Let's go ahead and just clean things. I like to start with the barrel first. Get in there and try to get back there and just make sure I wipe everything down. And then the brush always goes back in the rinse first. Look how dirty that is already just to get started. It's crazy. And some more suds. Let's use one of these. There we go. See, that's better. All right, and I'm gonna finish up with my big soft bristle short handled brush here. It works great for this. With the wheel mostly done, the next thing I wanna do is hit some of the rubber here on the tires and get that nice and clean. This is Adam's rubber and tire cleaner. I really like this stuff actually. It does a really good job. Some of the best I've used. 
And so it's okay to put it on top of the other stuff? Absolutely, yep. All of Adam's products, are you can use them together. They work really well together. That's one of the things I like about them. And you can see it's already turned yellow a little bit. It's, it's already working on all the grime and stuff on the rubber itself. All right, here we go. Let's scrub this. Our next step is going to be to power wash that wheel and get all the stuff off. Well, our wheel looks great, but we're not quite done. And this is kind of a funny step. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back and hit it with more soap. And you're like, well, I thought you just rinsed it. Why are you hitting it with more soap? That seems really strange. Well, here's the reason. I don't want water to dry on the car. Just straight water should never dry on the car, but you can always have soap dry on the car, no problem. That won't hurt it at all. You'll never get any water spotting or any issues from that. But if you let water dry on the car, you could get really bad water spots and they're really hard to get out. What I'm really doing here is going back and re-protecting the wheel because I know I've got the other three wheels to do. We're gonna be washing the car. There's a very good chance this wheel will dry completely if I don't do this first. It's not it's in the sun. Yes, yes, exactly. So it's in the sun and it's definitely gonna dry up very quickly. All right, well, that's all we needed to do. We're gonna go ahead and do the other three wheels and then we'll get to actually washing the car. Next thing I want to do is mix up our wash. Again, we're going to be using the Polish Angel, and this is called Flake. So it's an interesting, super highly concentrated wash. And the other thing about this is it has a fair bit of Carnuba in it. In their instructions, they specifically say to wash your car in the shade, but... And as you can see, our car is completely in the sun. We're gonna give it a go anyways. I think it's gonna be fine. So let me mix this up. It just takes a couple of teaspoons, of just a couple of ounces to this entire bucket. The other thing that's really interesting about this is it's non-foaming. So you saw when we mixed up the Atom soap for the wheels, it foams up so much that you get like a little bit of water and a ton of foam. It's kind of satisfying to see, but you just don't get that much water before your bucket overflows. So I think the concept here is you can fill your bucket up pretty much all the way and it's not going to foam. So that's kind of interesting. So let's check this out and see how it works. Okay, I'm just going to add two, three, just about that much. Also, I'm using really warm water as well. They didn't specify the water temperature, but for me, I always wash the car with fairly warm water. I think it just does better. So I hope it's gonna be okay. We'll see, we're gonna be using a warm car and the warm solution, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Well, I think that's enough. And as you can see, it didn't foam up much at all, which is exactly what they said. So it looks really good, but they said it will sort of be sort of creamy. And that's what I'm seeing. Well, we're all set with our buckets here. We've got our wash in one, we've got our rinse in the other, but as you can see with the car, it's quite dry at this point. And I am a little worried about sort of scratching it because now it's dry. But what I want to do is just go ahead and rehydrate it. Our soap is still on. Remember all that foam, that's still on the car. So it'll rehydrate right back up very quickly. But I'm just going to give it a light misting just to re-wet the car. Now I know this seems funny, but what I don't want to do is wash off of our soap because the next step is actually going to be to literally wash the car. Come on over here and we'll get started on that. Now when you can't help it and your car is in the sun, I like to wash the part that's in the sun first. That way we definitely get a coating of soap all over everything and we don't have to worry about water spots. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work my way from the sunny bit to the not so sunny bit on the other side of the car. I'm going to start from the top here and work our way down. When our mitt just doesn't seem to be doing anything anymore, we're gonna go into our rinse bucket, slosh it around quite a bit, bring it out, back into our suds here, which aren't really very sudsy. It's a little strange here, because I can smell it, but I can't really see any suds. It's a very different experience. Is this more of a wax? 
Right, so it has a wax built into it, but it's also a cleaner as well. And what they said is that as you move the, your mitt around, you'll be sort of grinding this carnauba wax into the paint. And that's the way it's supposed to work. So it's kind of interesting. I'm really curious to see how it works. I have to keep my wits about me because my clear bucket doesn't look all that different than my suds bucket. You certainly can smell the difference between the two though. It does smell different, huh? You can see our dirty bucket is definitely getting a bit dirtier. In this instance, we want to make sure that we rinse far more often because it's obviously much, much dirtier. So I did it. I put my dirty rag into my clean bucket. I knew that was going to happen. These things look almost identical. That's a bummer. If you've got different color buckets, that would probably help, something like that. But also, check this out. I always use a grit guard. So even though I've gotten a little bit of dirt in here, which is not ideal, this will always keep my rag up and away from the dirt at the bottom as it settles in. Plus it's a different color than the one that's on here. Your... Right. That's a good point. Look at the black one. I also have a little 40 degree guy on this one so you can scrub against it. This is the rinse bucket. So I should be able to see that but our rinse is getting so dirty I couldn't see to the bottom anymore. Not the end of the world. We'll just rinse carefully. All right, let's continue. On our car, we have several areas where a brush actually works better. So in these areas here, this little gap here, underneath the doors, and then around the windows. Sometimes it's just better. Now the brush I'm using for this is a natural fiber brush. I like these over the artificial bristles. They just seem a little bit softer and they hold the water a little bit better as well. And also don't forget to do your filler doors here. So we'll open this thing up and look, it's pretty dirty inside there. The brush works best in here to get in here and just clean all of this out. And this side of the door as well. And I like to leave these open. That way I remember when I'm rinsing to go ahead and rinse inside here as well. Now, in order to get into the door jams here, I like to use a teeny weeny little microfiber here. It even has a little place back here where you can kind of put your fingers in it and kind of hold it like that. These things work really well. And you can just lightly work out all of this grime that's right here. It's really bad, huh? So you can see it's even on the, even on this thing, you can see the dirt. So right into our dirty bucket there and scrub it against our guard. Go back here and do this again. At this point, I'm just gonna continue around the car. It's kind of the same old story. We obviously want this stuff to dry on the car. We don't want any water spots, so we don't wanna rinse until the very end. All right, so let's get through and wash the rest of the car. Well, we're all done washing the car. Our next step is going to be to rinse it, but I want you to check this out. This is our rinse bucket. And look at that. You can barely even see, you can't even see the bottom on it. It is so dirty. And this is our clean bucket. Now remember it was a little hazy anyways, but it's far less dirty than this is. And that's the whole point of these two bucket washes is to try and keep the dirt separated from your soap. It's so important so that you don't scratch the car because I'd say what, 50% of the damage that's done to a car's paint is usually done during the time when it's washed. Hard to believe, but yeah, washing can be very harsh. It's important to use, I know this seems like such a crazy thing. Oh my God, you gotta have two buckets. You gotta do this, it's a big pain in the butt, but it will save your paint and 
there's the proof. All right, well, our next step is going to be to rinse the car. But before we rinse the top of the car, we want to rinse the bottom of the car. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Colorado is terrible in that they put, not only do they put gravel on the road, they also throw down quite a bit of salt. And this car being a hybrid, I, it has a zillion computers in it, I'm pretty paranoid about all the salt that gets washed up under the bottom of the car. So that's what this guy is for. It's actually, I think it's specifically for cleaning sidewalks, really. But you can see those four jets under there and my wheels on the end. I can roll this under the car and we can wash the whole undercarriage. It works really, really well. We can put it on our pressure washer and have a bunch of sort of extendable tubes here. And you'll see, it's kind of interesting. Check this out. Look at that. And you can see all of the stuff coming off the bottom of the car here. It really works well. So washing the underside of the car, maybe, arguably, just as important as washing the top side of the car. All right, let me move the car back up. What we're gonna do is rinse off the car and dry it. Well, we're finally to the point where we can rinse down the car and dry it. And so, quick little product plug here. These are rapid dry towels. And, you know, this is funny. This one is actually a wash towel here with lots of little dendrites on it. I really wanted to use this to wash the car. I couldn't find it, and I just found it and that, so this is a great towel to wash the car with. And then I've also got one of the big rapid dry towels. Now, if you want to buy these towels, you can go to rapid dry towels or you can get them off of Nick Murray's site. He's also an authorized dealer for these as well. So I'll put some links down below where you can get these towels. They're amazing. We can dry the entire car with one towel. So the point of all this is that the last thing we want at the end of this process is to get any water spots on the car. That would be horrible. So you always want to make sure that you've got your towels at the ready so when you go to rinse your car you can get right to it. And of course we still have the sun a bit so we're going to rinse off the car and we'll dry from the sunny side to the dark side. All right let's go ahead and rinse the car. So this is the rapid dry towel. Look at the size of this thing, it's huge. Check out what it does on the, on the roof here. <laughs> Isn't that impressive? You literally can just drag it across and boom, the top is dry. It's, it, this is amazing. Works really, really well. That's why it helped me because I'm not very tall. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's true. If you're not very tall, it's a good way to get the, the bits on the top dry. Look at that. Isn't that something? We haven't rubbed, we haven't ground into this to try and dry it at all. All we're doing is just literally dragging this towel across across the car here. And do you need to wring it out? No, we won't need to. It's it's amazing. Now for the vertical bits, sometimes you do have to kind of work it a little bit. It's not too bad. In this first pass, we're really trying mostly to get the horizontal parts. We'll get the vertical bits in just a minute. Now, since this side is actually in the sun, we're gonna dry this completely. the first car wash that's had since the paint protective film? Uh, that's a good question. Probably. It brings up a good point. You know, we put out a video a little while back saying, don't wash your car. And for 90% of what this car goes through, that works perfectly. But this is a great example where you really do need to wash the car. It was covered in salt and covered in grime. It was horrible. And if you just try to use like a spray or something or a detail spray or a waterless car wash or something like that, you will scratch the paint so it's much better if it's as dirty as it was to just give it a proper bath and I think you're right Heidi I think this is probably the first proper bath we've had all right now that we've got the vast majority of the car dry and I'm not too worried about water spots we can switch towels this one is actually very wet at this point it's got all the water that was on the car it's actually kind of heavy but it's also a little difficult to work with I'm afraid it's gonna hit the ground and I don't want to kick up any dirt this is a another rapid dry towel and it's just a little smaller but it's very similar to the big huge dry towel so not super duper huge about that big much more manageable we can get in the more detailed areas over here like this in this little grill here and dry everything out get underneath in here and this car has so many little nooks and crannies. Another good way to dry off the car would be to use uh, compressed air or a very, very clean vacuum cleaner on, with the hose on the output. That works really well because there's just gonna be a ton of water in all of these little bits here. Get on little bits we missed here. This bit here. I notice you haven't done the wheels yet. Right, so the wheels will get done last because as much as you, time as you spend cleaning them, they always seem to be a little bit dirty in the end. Last thing I wanna do is rubber rag all over the wheels and then go back to the paint. That could be bad because as much time as we've spent cleaning those wheels, they're never really 100% clean. They're really, really difficult to get super duper clean. This is also a step I frequently forget to do. You just kind of in a hurry and maybe the weather's not 100%, so I forget to get in here and I notice it as soon as I open up the doors to get in the car though. Well, you notice it when you get goo all over your clothes. Yes. So that. <laughs> That's a really good point, Heidi, yeah, because it's very important that this be clean. The first time you get in the car, if you're wearing anything nice, you're gonna wipe across Black. all of this, yes, and you will just get it all over. <laughs> Well, now with the car completely dry, we can move on to the wheels, but you can kind of see how, why you would want to do this last. If you missed a spot back here and got some uh, brake dust or something on your drying cloth and then went back to your paint, you could really cause some problems. All right, well, we're just gonna dry the rest of the wheels. No big deal here. Mm -hmm. 
So how'd it turn out? And what do I think of the Polish Angel product? Well, I think the car looks great, but I think it also helps a lot that the car has PPF on it and that it was ceramic coated, including the wheels. That really helps a lot in winter washes. But also I really do like the Polish Angel. I think that's pretty neat that it's got Carnuba in it. Just kind of gives that Carnuba pop at the end. It's a little bit pricey for certain, but I think it's a really good quality product. And that foam cannon was incredible. That's their snow product. It worked really, really well. And if you are interested in any of the rapid dry towels, we just became an affiliate. Yay! So we'll have some links for that down in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.